Hello, students, guests, and faculty. Welcome to the School of Nursing Pinning Ceremony for the December 2020 graduates. I'm Dr. Judy Didion, Dean of the School of Nursing. The Pinning Ceremony is a time-honored tradition for nursing students dating back to the turn of the 20th century. It is a unique homage to what you, as nursing school graduates, have accomplished over the course of your education as well as a symbolic welcome into the profession of nursing. This is indeed an exciting moment. You are joining the ranks of, in my opinion, the noblest and most trusted profession, nursing. And you happen to be joining during an unprecedented time in history, at a time when nurses are at the forefront of healthcare during this global pandemic. This ceremony is a reflection of the many nurses that came before you. Perhaps some of these nurses are close relatives, friends, or faculty members. Maybe they inspired you, and that is why you are here today. Throughout the history of nursing, many nurses cleared the path for our future in the profession. Their paths taught us how to provide care, but their determination and persistence challenged us to continue their work. Florence Nightingale discovered that hygiene and good nutrition decreased mortality rates of wounded soldiers in the Crimean War. She also established formal nursing education. Lillian Wald, a leader in public health, improved the health of workers in living in New York City tenement homes by visiting them in their homes and establishing school health services. In the 1950s, Sister Jean Ward, who was a nurse in a premature infant unit, discovered that the use of sun therapy reduced jaundice, and now phototherapy is used as a common treatment today. Other nurses invented feeding tubes, self-care management strategies for diabetes and asthma, wound care strategies, and improved techniques for pain management and patient assessments. Your pinning celebration today marks your entrance into the profession where nurses provide care and also lead the change to improve care. And this year, 2020, the International Year of the Nurse, the year of the largest global pandemic in history, nursing has proven itself to be ready for the challenges that have arisen. With excitement and perhaps trepidation about beginning your nursing career, leadership and change may not be at the top of your mind. Perhaps you're only thinking about learning the ropes and becoming a competent nurse, but soon you'll find as your comfort level increases that patients, families, and peers will rely on you for your leadership skills. You'll find yourself challenged to make good decisions and to think critically about best approaches to care. The pin that was mailed to you for tonight's event represents your dedication, commitment, and professionalism to nursing practice. It is a badge that marks your transition at the School of Nursing from student to nurse to leader. The knowledge and skills you have attained through your program of study equips you with the ability to influence others. This includes your patients and their families, your peers, and other healthcare team professionals, as well as the community. I urge you to think of yourself in these terms as you design systems of care and as you advocate for the patient and family to be part of the healthcare team. I would be remiss if I did not address the support and encouragement of your family and friends who gave you their assistance, guidance, and comfort when it was needed. Thank you very much to all of them. So graduates, I am honored to welcome you to the world of professional nursing. So tonight, it is my pleasure of hearing from one of our graduates representing the basic BSN cohort, Charles Shamoon. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to my fellow peers in the Oakland University School of Nursing Fall Class of 2020. 
and what a year to graduate. Never before has there been such a focus on healthcare with every aspect of our lives, including our social interactions, media, and politics being dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic. And now I may be a little bit biased, but I truly believe our cohort is more prepared than any other to tackle the challenges of modern day healthcare. Our graduating class can be easily and powerfully defined by one word, bravery. For most graduating classes, it can be reasonably said that the moments that required the most bravery were sitting through one of Dr. Pateglio's exams, or perhaps submitting a paper to Dr. Newton. But not for us. No, instead we get to graduate into the worst pandemic in modern history. And when COVID did hit and our lectures and clinicals were canceled and moved online, we stayed strong and adapted. And when the virus ravaged our communities and strained our healthcare systems, we continued going to our jobs and providing care. And when it became clear that this virus was going to remain a prominent healthcare issue upon our graduation, we did not change paths. Instead, we became more determined. We were and are brave. 2020 truly is the year of the nurse. This year, which marks the 200th birthday of Florence Nightingale, we get to carry on her legacy of bravery. And just as the light of her lantern cut through the dark of the tents that housed the ill and injured of the Crimean War, we get to be the light of our patients and communities as we lead our nation and the world through one of its most defining moments. We have the honor of caring for our patients and their families as they suffer through an unknown disease. We have the honor of improving patient care to a population that lacks an abundance of nursing research and knowledge. And we have the honor of holding our patients' hands when they need it most and nobody else can. And so, to the class of 2020, go grab a glass of something. Here is to the memories we have made and those yet to come. And here is to the best group of nurses the world has ever seen. Thank you. Our next student speaker is Patrick Slade, representing the Accelerated Second Degree Program. Good evening, everyone. Dean Didion, faculty and staff, alumni, family and friends, and most importantly, my fellow members of the fall 2019 ASD cohort, Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address you all this evening. For those of you who don't know me, which is probably most of you watching at home, my name is Patrick Slade, and I've been chosen by my classmates to speak to you this evening on behalf of our cohort. It's truly an honor to be standing here in front of you, albeit virtually, representing each and every one of these incredible future nurses. To my family and friends who had no idea that I'd be speaking tonight, surprise. I don't think it can be overstated how important the support from each of our families and loved ones has been throughout this process. For those of you who have never attended nursing school, it's hard and it's demanding. You're almost always wrong, even when you're right, because your answer isn't the most right. So thank you to our families, our friends, and the faculty for being patient with us and putting up with us through all these extraordinarily stressful past few months. Now, I wanna start by reminding everyone that there's gonna be a discussion board post due this evening by 11.59 p.m. talking about what you learned from this speech, consisting of a minimum of 1,500 words and using at least three peer-reviewed articles from reputable nursing journals found exclusively on CINAHL. And one more thing, Make sure it's an APA 7th edition with in-text citations, no more 6th edition. So as you can tell by the lack of roaring laughter deserved by that joke, I'm pre-recording this speech without a live audience due to the current state of the COVID-19 pandemic. Which brings me to a quote from C.S. Lewis. He said, hardships often prepare people for an extraordinary destiny. To say that the last nine months or so has been simply a hardship is an understatement. That being said, I was told I'd only have about three minutes or so to speak tonight, so I'm gonna to try to shift my focus away from COVID-19 and focus on this extraordinary destiny that we have in front of us. We as nurses are there when the first breath is taken, when the last breath is taken, and everything in between. 
Can you imagine a more extraordinary destiny to have than that? To be there when the first cries are heard, to comfort the infant when the first bath is given, to provide comfort when their first bone is broken or they get their first sore throat, or even when their first child is born. We're also there when they say goodbye to the ones they love most. And we're even there holding their hands when they take their last breaths. That brings me back to our very first semester in health assessment when Dr. Paul spoke about a situation in her nursing career where she sat bedside with an individual who was clearly dying with no family, no friends, and no visitors at his side. And she asked us, what do you think I did for him? Instinctively, I said, held his hand. And she said, yes, I held his hand. I wasn't there to pass his medications. I wasn't there to do his assessment. I just sat there and held his hand. William Shakespeare once said, the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. Well, our gift brought us all together over the past 15 months. Our short time together at the Anton Frankel Center, in the Sim Lab, on WebEx and on Zoom, has strengthened our bond and helped us develop the special gift that we have to give. Unfortunately, after only six short months together, COVID struck and displaced many of us from what was our new home at the Anton Frankel Center. I still remember the first day in Linda Poli Droulard, or as we prefer to call her, Mama Bear, in her fundamentals class. She had us all stand up, gather in a circle, hold hands, and pledge something to the effect of, my name is Patrick Slade, and I promise to always be there for you. Now, none of us could have imagined that in just a few short months after reciting that pledge, that those 60 or so faces who started out as strangers would grow to become a family that relied on each other now more than ever. Whether it was an early morning or a late night text wishing good luck on an exam, a quiz, or a validation, a Facebook post reassuring everyone that we can do this and it'll only make us stronger, a funny meme about our lack of sleep and our overabundance of caffeine that we needed to make it through all these virtual clinicals and lectures. We truly are a special cohort, and I couldn't be any prouder to be a part of this extraordinary group of future nurses. Now, as nursing graduates, we have our purpose. The purpose is to give our gift to any and everyone we encounter. It's a gift that's been forged in joy, in frustration, in satisfaction, in anger, in elation, in excitement, and even disappointment, and just about any other powerful adjective that can be used to describe human emotion. We're going to fulfill our purpose through caring, compassion, and our unrelenting passion to never give up, despite any hardships that we may encounter. We all know that the nursing careers that lie ahead, our extraordinary destinies, will not be easy. But rest assured that we are here to support one another as we have been since day one. Today, we are baccalaureate educated nurses and graduates of the accelerated, not abbreviated, second degree program in the midst of a global pandemic. So take a second to let that sink in graduates of an accelerated, not abbreviated, baccalaureate nursing program in the midst of a global pandemic. Very few individuals have that special distinction. It's a true testament to the type of men and women that are a part of this special cohort. The countless hours of studying for exams and quizzes, practicing for our validations, our ATI, our clinicals, and our preceptorships have finally paid off. In closing, I want to leave you with something that Albert Einstein once said. He said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. I know we didn't imagine graduating nursing school in the midst of a global pandemic, but we did imagine ourselves as nurses. We imagined it, we worked hard at it, and we achieved it. So continue to imagine what your nursing career will be like, what joy it will bring you, the people you will encounter, the friends that you will make, the differences that you will make, and it will happen because those imaginations are very, very real. They are previewing your life's coming attractions. So now I want to ask, ask everyone watching at home to congratulate their graduate, whether it be with a hug, a fist pump, a text message, or however you choose to acknowledge them, please do so. They deserve it. 
They have sacrificed more than you may ever know to fulfill their imaginations, live out their dream, and embark on this extraordinary destiny. So congratulations to this amazing cohort. What an amazing achievement. It's truly been an honor and a tremendous honor uh, sharing this joy with you. Thank you. It's now my honor to introduce our faculty keynote speaker, Dr. Julia Paul. Good evening, graduates, faculty and administrators, family and friends who have helped make this all possible. Tonight, I have the honor of saying a few last words as a conclusion of your time here. Our mission here at Oakland University School of Nursing is to prepare transformational leaders committed to caring and using the best evidence in nursing practice, education, and research to optimize the health of the public in a diverse, ever-changing society. In this pandemic, the rest of the world is learning what we in nursing already realized, that the line between health and illness is very fine, that good health is precious. You have persevered through this rigorous program in this confused, ever-changing time with all of the limitations that it brings to learn the scope of professional nursing practice so that you can, with all confidence, enter into each nurse-patient relationship saying, I will be your nurse and I will take care of you. Nursing theorist Myra Levine calls on nurses to bring dignity and compassion to the tasks of caring for another person and explains that valuing the sanctity of life is the essence of a respectful relationship that one person must have for another. And this is never more important than when a nurse-patient diet is created and one individual enters dependency, willing or not, and places trust in another person. She continues that whether the patient is suffering with pain or has some other need, it is the nurse's absolute moral duty to bring all skills of hand, heart, and mind to prevent or alleviate that suffering, to address that need. These days, you will have to set aside your own reservations and fears of illness for yourself or for others around you and commit to caring. A few weeks ago, one of the surgeons that I work with commented that people remaining at work in hospitals these days are there not because of benefits or rewards, but simply because they care about people. I know that many of you have already secured nursing positions. I know that some of you are continuing on to further your degrees. Even in this dark time of fear and uncertainty, I'm excited for you. Even so many years into my own nursing career, I can honestly say that I'd be happy to be in your shoes again. You have chosen a great profession. Those of us who are teaching nursing know that this is true. We have given you our insights into the knowledge and skills that are the science and art of nursing. We look at you and see the transformational leaders in you. We know that you can use nursing science to solve problems and use your skills to become expert practitioners. I think I can speak for all my faculty colleagues to say that we are so proud of you. Thank you for choosing nursing. Congratulations. Good evening. I am excited to be able to celebrate and congratulate all of you and acknowledge the high achievements of this graduating group. Among this group of graduates, there are several exceptional nursing students that have been selected to receive achievement awards. The first award is the Board of Visitors Excellence in Nursing Award, which honors a graduating student who shows strong academic and clinical performance and has demonstrated high quality professional nursing care. The Board of Visitors Excellence in Nursing Award for ASD goes to Julie Gritter. The Board of Visitors Excellence in Nursing Award for BSN goes to Tanya Najim. The Elsevier Health Sciences Book Award is given to a graduating student 
who has demonstrated noteworthy caring behaviors in clinical practice that exemplify both humanistic and altruistic values. This award goes to Gregory Shanky. Congratulations, Gregory. The Exceptional Achievement Award is given to a graduate who has demonstrated an outstanding level of academic and professional performance through his or her exceptional contribution to the promotion of high quality health care or contribution to the advancement of nursing knowledge. The award goes to Tanya Molnar. The Leadership Award acknowledges a student who has demonstrated exceptional leadership qualities related to the healthcare needs of the community and supports the School of Nursing through extracurricular involvement. This award is being given to two students, Patrick Slade in the ASD program, congratulations Patrick, and Arisi Spurilari in the RNBSN program, congratulations Arisi. Next is the DAISY Award for Exemplary Faculty. The DAISY Foundation is a national organization which is dedicated to recognizing outstanding nurses. DAISY Award recipients are nominated by School of Nursing students, faculty, and staff, and are believed to demonstrate excellence in education and commitment to student achievement. They serve as a role model for professional nursing and demonstrate an enthusiasm for teaching, learning, and nursing that inspires and motivates students. There are two faculty categories to receive this award. The first category is for full-time faculty, and the DAISY Award this year goes to Jan Barris. Congratulations, Jan. The DAISY Award for part-time clinical faculty this year goes to Leah Morris. Congratulations, Leah. As I mentioned, this award is typically given to faculty. However, this year an academic advisor was also nominated and selected to receive this honor. With the many challenges students have experienced these past months, this person has gone above and beyond her usual advising role and worked to assist students through virtual learning and with completing their degrees. This DAISY Award goes to Sarah Mullen. Congratulations, Sarah. Congratulations to all award recipients. It is at this point in the ceremony that we would begin the pinning of graduates. We're hoping you'll take out the pin that was sent to you and that perhaps you're watching with a loved one and as we call your name to be recognized, you'll be pinned with the Oakland University School of Nursing pin. The following are the 2020 winter BSN graduates. Brianna Abu, Mary Abu, Brianna Amel, Selena Bacall, Joseph Burns, Emily Bushami, Michelle Duffy, Shanane Azegwe, Alyssa Joyce Fernandez, Celine Faubert, Catherine Gobitz, Kayla Gazinski, Loida Grishai, Michelle Hammy, Samantha Hebert, Amber Hines, Paige Holloway, Shannon Jackson, Daniel Johnson, Rachel Johnson, Brittany Canoe, Beatrice Elaine Lee, Charlotte Marchese, Tanya Molner, Tanya Najim, Anthony Pacella, Julianne Pham, Tanya Race, Megan Richards, Amanda Ritchie, Bryn Ropetta, Allison Ross, Mary Rush, Daniel Rusi, Krista Ruddy, Alexandra Rushing, Aaron Schwartz, Charles Shamoon, Emily Smith, Winoa Vang, Diana Vitai, Miriam Waxenberg, Brianna Weekland, Lauren White, Deborah Arnold, Samantha Belays, 
Brianne Barrett, Allison Barsh, Travis Beverly, Rachel Bishop, Katie Burke, Amanda Carter, Sheila Champion, Alicia Chandler, Dylan Cipollone, Marina Degane, Cleany Devertool, Brittany Durecki, Megan Elrod, Victoria Federko, Adrian Fleming, Elaine Garreau, Cheryl Hafer, Taylor Hall, Latasha Harris, Shirley Jackson, Chiquella Jefferson, Kelsey McMillan, Ali Raza Mamon, Matthew Miles, Bedor Mohammed, Amber Nacone, Jessica Owens Taylor, Maria Pertzi, Pudmavathi Perninkil, Sarah Rob, Lauren Rivard, Lisa Rogers, Samantha Ross, Nikki Rydell, Emily Shoemaker, Casey Scala, Garland Solaka, Irisi Spirolari, Marco Stevanowski, Paula Tate, Sarah Tadonetti, Lisa Adams, Adra Alsana, Ashley Austin, Ashley Babish, Jacqueline Bailey, Miriam Ballestas Elsie, Laura Barlow, James Dane, John Darusha, Jade Edwards, Chow and Sminger, Madison Freeman, Allison Gabrion, Michael Greiner, Julie Greider, Alexander Guernsey, Jordan Harold, Ezekiel Hosu, Schwan Howe, Emily Howell, Kimberly Imber, Julie Jackson, Amalia Jawad, Nicole Johnston, Anna Jones, Haley Kennedy, Amani Mahmood, Patrick McElowey, Dara Miller, Sabam Mitra, Ariana Parr, Ishrat Parvez, Rahi Putel, Sarah Poche, Marie Pregenzer, Alexis Rome, Tristan Richardson, Jimmy Sana, Lauren Savarino, Madeline Scroji, Daruvi Shaw, Gregory Shanky, Robert Shugart, Alexandra Sims, Patrick Slade, Rachel Shadar, Brooke Trombley, Joy Uba Bing, Stephanie Verbeek, Eric Wumbau, Tyler Wardell, Chelsea White, Michelle Zaltzman, Stephen Zimney. Now, graduate Gregory Shanky will lead us in the time honored tradition of reciting the Nightingale Pledge. Thank you, Dr. Buick. Florence Nightingale is considered the pioneer of nursing. She tended to the wounded soldiers on the battlefield of the Crimean War and acquired the nickname, the Lady of the Lamp, mostly because of her routine of making the rounds at night, tending to the wounded soldiers. She paved the way for professional nursing and in honor of her contribution, 
the nursing pledge was named after her. It was first recited in the spring of 1893, and its recitation has since become a revered tradition for nursing graduates everywhere. Graduates, please join with me as we say the Nightingale Pledge together. I pledge myself here before this assembly to practice my profession with integrity. I will endeavor to maintain and elevate the standard of nursing, both as a science and as an art. I wholeheartedly recognize the importance of high standards of care and of personal accountability. I devote myself to the healing, protection, and welfare of those committed to my care. I accept a duty to work for the improvement of health in the communities of which I live and work. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and will respect the privacy of medical information. I will act with compassion in ethical manners. I will not knowingly administer or consume any harmful substance. I commit to interdisciplinary collaboration and lifelong learning. And I fully acknowledge the seriousness of the responsibility that I accept in my calling and the significance of this pledge that I take today. Wonderful. Graduates, as you advance in your careers, I know you will remember the words of the Nightingale Pledge and your duty to your profession. We're grateful that you chose Oakland University School of Nursing to pursue your BSN degree, and we know you will represent us well. I'd like to thank the Oakland University Student Nurses Association, the SNAOU Pinning Committee, for all their work in, the, in planning this ceremony. So thank you for joining us, and remember that Oakland University is your home, and we hope to see you come back and visit. So once again, congratulations to all of you. Class of 2020, during your education, you touched our hearts. Now we welcome you into a profession where you'll touch the hearts of many. Congratulations, you did it. Congratulations, graduates, and welcome to the profession. We need you now more than ever before. Congratulations, class of 2020, you did it. I found a quote from Tom Brokaw, and I wanted to share his words of wisdom with you. You are educated. Your certification is in your degree. You may think of it as your ticket to the good life. Let me ask you to think of an alternative. Think of it as your ticket to change the world. I look forward to hearing about how you change the world and impact nursing practice. Cheers to you. Please stay in touch. I wish you peace and all good things. Hi everyone, congratulations. You've all worked really hard to get to this point and you have a lot to be proud of. I can't wait for you to get out there and make a huge difference. All of you, all of you, congratulations class of 2020, you've worked so hard. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you're going to do. What a monumentous time to join the nursing workforce, but thank you so much for everything. Congratulations. I want to congratulate all the graduating seniors on their graduation and a job well done. Hi everyone. Congratulations to you all. I'm very proud of each and every one of you and how far you've come and how much you've accomplished along the way. I remember back to that very first time we met in the lab and how scared you are. Think of where you are today. Um, and I congratulate you for your accomplishments. It's been wonderful getting to know you. I wish you all the best. You're about to embark on a wonderful, wonderful career. I hope it is very fulfilling and satisfying. It will take you so many places. I wish you all the best. Congratulations. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Um, enjoy these last few days of being a student and welcome to the profession of nursing. Congratulations everybody. 
We are all so very proud of you. As you enter the most honored profession, remember to be the one nurse, that one nurse that made all the difference in the world. You are the best of the best. Mama Bear loves you. Graduation is a time for reflection, for planning, and for celebrating. Be your best self. Have faith in your abilities and let the rest take care of itself. Congratulations, nurses.